Hello, my name is Rihanna Hansom and I am currently studying fashion marketing at Leeds Beckett University. In this vlog I will be discussing the benefits of marketing orientated businesses and I will also be discussing the four most common marketing myths. First of all, what is marketing? The Chartered Institute of Marketing describes marketing as the management process responsible for identifying, anticipating and satisfying customer requirements profitably. Marketing is much more than just a function of the business. It is a philosophy for the whole organisation and can be seen as being the responsibility of every employee. What are the benefits of marketing orientated businesses? A marketing orientated business focuses on selling what the customer wants. They rely heavily on market research and provide solutions when their rivals don't fulfil the customer's requirements. This can also be described as a latent market where the needs are defined but not yet met. This makes them seek to be innovative with products and services which increases in market share and also increases sales. As opposed to a non-market orientated business who may not meet the customer's desires. These organisations in particular value the customer's desires and place the customer at the heart of all business decisions. This helps increase customer satisfaction which can help towards developing relationships and loyal customers. However, satisfied customers and loyal customers are not always the same. I will expand on this theory further on in my vlog. Not only does customer satisfaction ensure a high chance of the customer returning, but it also positively impacts the brand's reputation through word of mouth, which can act as a function of cost-free advertisement. The four most common marketing myths. Number one, a big name brand can sustain a higher price. To a certain extent, this myth can be seen as true, as high-end designer brands such as Chanel, Givenchy and Dior are asking for a minimum of £300 per product, reaching to maximums of on average £20,000. Due to celebrity endorsements and red carpets, we perhaps believe that we are paying for luxury and premium products and therefore potentially meaning they can charge more of a premium price. However, for some big name brands, their whole approach to their marketing strategy is in fact their lower prices. Take a production orientated business that focuses on mass production and goes by the saying of stack them high, sell them cheap. An example of this type of business is Primark. Many of us tend to shop at Primark as they sell similar products to Topshop and Zara for a fraction of the price. Although Primark is still classed as a big name brand, they could potentially lose a large portion of their customers if they were to significantly increase their prices. To conclude, my personal opinion is that it depends on what type of orientation the big name brand is and what is their goals and purpose? Are they aiming to be luxury and charge premium prices? Or is their aim to attract customers and consumers through their low prices? Number two, a satisfied customer is a loyal customer. For example, Say you have a phone contract with phone company A for a number of years and you are satisfied with their services. However, phone company B is offering more minutes and more data than your previous contract but for the same price. As you will now be getting more for your money and have upgraded, this may mean that even though you were satisfied with company A, you are now more satisfied with company B. You could argue that because you were happy with the services of company A, you found that you had built a sense of trust. 
something you, that you may not have with company B, and therefore this encourages them to return. Thereby, you would be showing loyalty to customer A. To increase the number of existing loyal customers, it can be a good marketing decision to generate a loyalty scheme and rewarding your loyal customers. This will mean they feel valued and there's a higher chance of them return. For example, take Car Vehicles. Their reward scheme is a loyalty app on your mobile phone. Every time you spend in store, you get a point for every pound that you spend, which then adds up to rewards and can be things such as vouchers or a cocktail in their cocktail bar. Say you had a £10 voucher and you were wanting to buy a lipstick from the Mac counter. You now have John Lewis, which is Harvey Nichols' newest competitor. Which one would you go to if you had a £10 voucher for the loyalty app, but then John Lewis don't have any loyalty scheme? You are more likely to go and buy the lipstick from the Mac counter at Harvey Nichols because you've got this £10 spend. So, so reward schemes can help the customer to return to the store. Loyalty schemes can also mean that you are set apart from your competitors as well. Number three, a strong brand is invincible. Take Samsung as an example. Samsung released their Galaxy Note 7 smartphones on August 19th and have since been recalled over major concerns about faulty batteries. They are estimated to experience significant decrease in their smartphone market share, whilst before the incident, this year they were positioned as the leaders of the smartphone market with a 22.8% share. Although this shocking fault in their product has the potential to rapidly affect their status in the smartphone market and result in a loss of revenue in the short term, Samsung also had 21% of the market share in the global TV market in 2015. And as they produce many more products and have a high reputation, it is very unlikely that in the long term, Samsung will go bust and experience complete failure. And lastly, number four, advertising always affects sales. Celebrity endorsement is becoming an increasingly popular way to advertise. It is a strategy used by brands and companies to promote their products or services. It is so popular as they already have a following in today's society. Some could say celebrities are viewed as being more powerful. They are the elite. Brands use celebrities who portray their objectives to create a realistic story to the consumer, meaning they can better visualize themselves buying the product. For example, in 1984, Nike launched the Nike Jordan shoe brand and in 2009, statistics showed that Jordan led Nike Jordan's taking over the basketball shoe market by 75% and 10.8% of the overall shoe market in the US. Though this endorsement was extremely successful, this is not always the case. In 2009, Katy Perry was the face of GHD. However, two years later, the owners of GHD, the Jamela Group, claimed she caused the brand sales to decrease due to her popularity in Europe decreasing. They then decided to drop Katy Perry from the brand. To conclude, I personally believe advertising can definitely affect a business's sales. However, it is not necessarily always a positive effect. Overall, I feel I have learned a lot of useful and interesting information on marketing. It has helped me understand that with marketing myths, there is not a black and white answer and that as a business, it is important to consider both sides. Thank you for watching my vlog and I hope you enjoyed it.